really a pleasure to be here with all of you. And um, I am so inspired, thank you Dr. Chan, and what you said about you know giving ourselves rest and listening to our bodies. Because as Dr. Hewitt was saying, this is the time for us to really tune in to our feminine and pay attention to the signals that our body is giving us. Um, so how many of you have some type of digestive issue that you're dealing with? Thank you. And how many of you are dealing with um, sometimes having you know, some mood swings or some type of emotional issue that you're dealing with? Yes. And it's so common, isn't it? When we go to our doctor, the first thing that we hear that I heard and that got me in the field was always, well, here's a pill. I have to take care of that. And that can be very helpful short term. However, it often does not address what really happens in the long run with our issues. Um, so I'd like to share with you a little bit about how I got into this field. Um, I was working at Stanford Hospital for many years and interviewing many patients and hearing from them about how they felt about the outcome. And that was in the 80s. I was working with a number of physicians interviewing and counseling patients with digestive issues, brain issues. And at that time, as, you, as we all know, um, in, you know, in allopathic medicine, everything is distinct and separate. So when someone came in for depression or anxiety, everyone that they saw was looking at only, well, that's it. It's in the brain, right? And if they had a digestive issue, then it was in the gut. So, so um, I'm here to clarify that the good news is um, that we now have a new system of healthcare that's developing that actually embraces both the conventional allopathic medicine and integrative medicine in the process. And as Leslie was saying, it's so important for all of you to be part of that and to participate in creating a new way that we, you know, we are with healthcare. So, um, so what I'd like to share with you is that here I was at Stanford, of all the places, that is the best place in the world, right? People came from all over the world. And what they were telling me was, this is terrible. I'm not getting any lasting results with this. And so I said, you know, something has to change. What's going on here? Stanford, the best place in, you know, in the world, and the results are not there. So I committed myself to um, participating in making the system change so that we're looking at much more of a functional approach to healthcare, which is about how is the body functioning and what are some of the underlying issues. So today I'll be talking to you about the fact that people with digestive imbalances, such as inflammatory bowel disease and all types of issues like that generally also have anxiety, depression, ADD, ADHD, and many other types of mental disorders. As a matter of fact, the research in functional medicine shows that 80% of schizophrenics and people with bipolar disorder had an infl inflammation in the gut. So there is a new developing field that shows that the majority of people with imbalances in the brain actually have that because it starts, guess where? It starts in the digestive system right here. So let's all take a deep breath, put your hand on your gut, close your eyes for a moment, and just really honor that part of yourself. It's part of the whole, it's where the origin is of our being and where the feminine being also lives. So I'd really like you to, as you're breathing into your gut right now, take some slow deep breaths and give it some good energy, send it a healing color, and ask yourself, ask the digestive system right now, what is it that you need? And just listen, and this is so important for us as women, to take the time to just listen. And then open your eyes and come back. 
And I would encourage you to take that time each day because what I found working with patients um, after my experience at Stanford, I was asked to join an integrative clinic, a functional medicine physician with whom I worked for 15 years side by side. And we saw some incredible results with people, lasting results. Um, we saw a reversal of many digestive issues and of many brain issues. And part of what she and I were doing was to educate, especially you know, in the practice to realize that in standard medicine, we have this wonderful tree, let's just take this tree. And what we do is, which is really helpful when you break a leg, right, or when you go into the emergency room, you have to have the ability to identify what's going on. You go take a ladder and you say, okay, here it is. You know, this is the symptom, this is what's going on. And in functional medicine, we look at the roots of the tree and we look at what is nourishing the body. So this is a key to the absorption, elimination, and digestion is at the core of your brain and your gut and your life. Every disease, all autoimmune diseases, have an origin in the gut. For example, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and um, uh, you know, MSMD, they have now found in the latest literature that if you eat the foods that nourish your digestive system and give yourself the right bacteria to balance it, that you are actually going to have a significant impact on that. So remember, it's important to look at the symptoms. However, we want to look at what's at the core of that, what's really causing this. Brain fog, depression, you know, poor memory, lack of focus can all be improved by paying attention to, for example, what's going on in the gut. And one thing is maldigestion, right? So many people came into our office taking Tums. How many of you have taken Tums and Rolaids, right? And so we're different types of things to help. And then also the other part is looking at are you absorbing your food? and being aware of the delicate balance of the billions of bacteria that live in your digestive system. So what we were doing was testing. We decided we didn't want to guess. We wanted to test and find out what was the bacteria that was growing there. We found that in people with, how many of you have kids with um, brain, like you know, ADHD, ADD, so I know a lot of you might be either teaching children like that. We found that 80% of the children that had a learning disability had a gut inflammation were eating gluten. Remember what Leslie said? Gluten is the key, so I'm really emphasizing that. To take out gluten allows you to really go into the nourishment of the body. Your body will be able to absorb the nutrients if you do that. If the gluten causes inflammation at all levels, and again, it starts there. And these learning disabilities, and um, ADD, ADHD, Asperger's, you know, all the whole range was very much influenced by that. We also found that anxiety disorders, and especially IBS, inflammatory bowel syndrome, and more serious ones started with gluten intolerance. And this is what happened with me, with my family, with all of my friends. They said, I didn't know this. How many of you were told by your doctor, you know, that diet could have an influence? As a matter of fact, so many people that I counsel in my practice every day say to me, my doctor said diet doesn't even make a difference, right? Because there isn't the education in medical school. So the number one thing is, I wanna go back to, is that you have billions of friendly bacteria in your digestive system. Guess what kills that off? The important thing is the stress which Dr. Chan was talking about. If the hormones are out of balance, we're running on high cortisol. Everyone I see's cortisol is completely out of balance. So when that happens, the next thing that happens, the friendly bacteria, billions of them, three pounds of our body weight, hundreds of billions of bacteria that live here that help us make the enzymes we need to digest and absorb our food to help us to get the right nourishment that we need. Remember the roots of the tree. So if that's out of balance, then everything else is going to be affected. So just like I was saying, you know, in functional medicine, we look at both the roots and the branches, not just a tiny leaf on the tree. So what we did in the clinic was, we were having people eat, really replenish that bacteria. So it gets killed off by stress by eating a lot of processed food, 
And guess what? By not stopping and taking care of yourself, because all the people that were going all the time, not taking a day of rest, you know, the high cortisol, and also chemicals, and one of the most important things is prescription drugs. And how many of you are aware that even Advil can kill off the bacteria? Are some of you aware of that? That even over-the-counter medication. So um, how many prescription drugs do you think the average American is on by the age of 70? Let me just get a count. Just raise your hand as I say. Five. Ten. Fifteen. All right, you're pretty. This is great. This is a great group. Um, I recently did an interview with a physician who's doing a study on elders at the VA on the drugs. They're taking 25 prescription drugs. Can you imagine that the average person that is there, the average elder? And, she, and when I asked her, I said, is there, um, please hold, I'll address that later. Is there a, um, a correlation, do you think, with the gut bacteria and the fact that there are all these drugs? And she said, oh, we don't know that. We don't know about that. So it's really important for you to you know, educate, as Leslie was saying, your legislators, write letters and say, we want functional medicine, which is now actually becoming mainstream, as part of our healthcare system. This is one of the most important things because what we found is that when the patients came in, there are drugs, you know, the, the brain drugs also killed off the gut bacteria. So, so then, you know, there's no, there's a barren terrain. And the other important thing that we found is, is um, secretary IGA. How many of you have heard of SIGA? This is such a sophisticated audience. Great. I don't ever get that in my talk, so this is wonderful. <laughs> Yay for all of you. You're so aware and you're learning so much. I just want to say that in Europe, every physician that does a physical tests for the mucosal immunology. And you can ask for that here too, it's a salivary test. Um, we do it at the office in our clinic, a functional medicine test, and Leslie Hewitt, you know, she was very much saying to me, you know, tell them that they can test. You don't have to wonder about what's going on with your body. So again, test your bacteriology and mycology. And you, I can speak to you about that later at my booth. I'll be there to explain some of the tests that we do. Uh, there's stool testing, there's salivary testing, and that gives you a really good idea of what's going on. And even more importantly, what's really great is that you're learning how early stage inflammation is actually caused by so much of the bad bacteria in the gut. The bacteria produces enzymes that actually produce toxins in your body. So these are then toxins, that's why your brain is affected. Those toxins move not just in the gut, you know, in standard medicine, it's, oh, it's just here, right? The toxin's just over here. So as long as we medicate the toxin, we don't have to worry about it. Well, the reality is, as the planet is so interrelated, and all our bodies are, and we listen, is that there's a very close correlation between dysbiosis or overgrowth of the gut bacteria and toxins and inflammation that starts here. So all of the brain disorders like dementia, Alzheimer's, degenerative disorders all have their origin in that inflammatory response that starts in the digestive system. So as women, we have, I mean, this is really important news. Have you, have the, how many of you have heard of this, that you can actually be proactive by paying attention to the bacteria? Some of you have, that's great. And, and the secretary IgA, and, and catching the inflammation by staying off gluten and dairy so that you're focusing on non-inflammatory foods, which are the green leafy vegetables, the whole grains, the proteins, being aware that you're eating the right foods, taking the right probiotics. I want to share with you a little bit about that. In, a, in most of the, in a recent study actually that has been done, it showed that 80% of the bacteria, those little critters that you get over the counter, you know, when you purchase uh, your probiotic are no longer viable by the time you get them. And so what happens is we buy all these different probiotics, but unless we have strain specific for the condition that we're dealing with and the right species, what happens, we take them, but 
but they don't culture. So in, in our clinic, we check that. We get, had people get over the counter, and a year later, they were still a barren terrain. They did not have enough of the different bacteria that are essential. So there are specific bacteria that you may need that when you test, you get the information. Here's what's low. Here's the bacteriology that's low. And then here's what you need to do and where you need to get it to actually help your gut repair itself. So this is really a key because what we did then at the clinic for optimal brain health, and, and the research shows this, is you know once you get the bacteria balanced in the gut, then by eating the right foods and working also with the stress, being aware of what your, your body needs, we found that a lot of people's brains got a lot better that they could go off of their serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The SSRIs, all they do is keep the serotonin from depleting out of the body, but we actually replenish the serotonin by taking the right neurotransmitters that they needed, and the guess what? By eating the right foods, you make more neurotransmitters for your brain. So with anxiety, we use biofeedback. We use you know, a lot of different ways, but most importantly, paying attention to the gut is really a key for, for you and being aware of the interconnectedness. So, um, so a lot of people say to me, well, give me an example of what happened. And what I'd like to tell you about is a 36-year-old woman we saw recently with ulcerative colitis. And she had bleeding, pain, mucus every day, had to stop work, could not have completely shifted her life. So we did the test, the digestive test, comprehensive analysis, 24 analytes. In Europe, they usually just do um, all of the analytes. Here, you know, you get the, the stool swab, and if you have a cold blood or blood in your stool, it means you're already pretty far along in your health situation. So what we did is we replenished the probiotics, got her on the right diet, helped her with natural plant-based nutrients for the gut. If you have questions about what those are, I realize I just have a few minutes remaining. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about that at my booth. I have a booth here. What are the plant-based nutrients that help heal intestinal permeability, help heal you know, inflammation in the gut? So I want to leave you with this. Um, what we did is we used that, and then six months later, her doctor said, what is going on here? She's completely, she was told she would be on prednisone for the rest of her life. She was on three steroids, Another lady, age 30, was put on five different medications. One year post-treatment with the digestive repair protocol, remove the offending foods, re-inoculate with the good bacteria, repair the gut. We are following all these patients two years later, no more inflammation. They're off of all their meds, they're living normal lives. Their diet is fantastic, you know, their, their health is fantastic. So I wanna leave you with this. Health is your most important asset. This is the key, and the, and, you, and the gut repair, paying attention to really listening to your gut, helping to listen, give the gut what it needs, nourish it and repair it and revitalize is the most important thing that you must pay attention to. It's really been a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I will be also at my booth um, right now since there's a break. So any of you that have actually, I'll, I'll be, here in the in this hall, is that okay for a few minutes? Can I take questions yes, now? Yes, we're going to do okay. a Q&A, so a yeah. if you do have a question, I'm going to invite you to come up to the front so that you can ask it. And I think there was a question, come on up. We just have a few minutes before our break, but we want to hear from you. If you could share your name and the question, please. Uh, Sandra Fractious. I was trying to ask what uh, Glucogen is? What? You were saying um, gluten. Oh, gluten. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Still know yeah. what that is. Yes, right. Um, there's a great book um, also that's out that is about you know the wheat belly. So I'm encouraging you all to read that. It's a substance that's in wheat and in many other grains that when most of us are cannot digest it, and right now because of the genetic modification, we have made super gluten. The gluten is 10 times as potent, becomes a sticky substance in the gut, 
and causes not just gut inflammation, but throughout the body, the inflammation spreads. That's really important. It's like little Pac-Man that not, they don't end here. They go into every organ of your body. So please, all of you, read Wheat Belly and watch the movie Food Matters. And because Food Matters talks about this issue with the United States more so than other countries, really increasing the gluten. You guys need to know it is becoming a major health issue now. Most people used to be able to handle it. In Europe, they can. Here, we cannot. We cannot digest it. That's basically wheat products. Yes. And so it's not just wheat, it's oats and it's rye, and you need to buy products. And you know, at Whole Foods, they have a whole range, and everywhere now is gluten free products. Yes. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Can you would share your name and your question, please? My name is Kate, and I first of all want to say just thank you for being here. You're amazing. And my question is, is it possible to get too much probiotics? Because I take a lot of um, like green drink supplements. Um, I drink a lot. I love kombucha. Uh, but I was wondering if, if it's possible to, to overdo it. And, and what would you be your suggestion for the right balance of okay. probiotics and prebiotics? Thank you, yes, that's very important because um, the, I would say I've hardly ever seen anyone in 25 years who could overdo it. I suppose you can, but I recommend that you take pharmaceutical grade that are more tailored to your body because you could be taking all this and you're not taking the right bacterial strains. So there's, you know, there's so many hundreds of different strains and what we do is a health evaluation, which I can tell you about later, that actually assesses which of the strains are most important. So yeah, it, it, you can't overdose. I think that's a very good question. Yeah. Thank you. We have another question from another lovely lady. Your first name and your question, Anne. Okay. My name's Anne, and my question has to do with you were talking about with new healthcare coming in. I'm wondering how long it takes to do the diagnostic tests, how much it normally costs to do that? Do you make a distinction between anaerobic bacteria and uh, like if you were probably uh, needed to do a whole overall, how would you approach that and what would it take? So that is a good question to ask me at my booth. Uh, there's gonna be a break and I will be there. This is a very technical question because we have four different types of tests. The good news is ladies, we have tests for all you know, ratio for all types of income levels. We're trying to make it very cost effective. However, you all need to make, again, you know, we'll get involved because we want to have these tests be part of healthcare. Right now, it's one stool swap. If you have blood, you're done in. You're in an $80 billion system. It, what the tests we do catch years before whether you're going to have any issues. So that's what I would like to, what Leslie also really wants to emphasize. See me at the booth. See me afterwards. It's just to the left here. It's the Light Living, light living Program. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And our last question, your name and your question. So my name is Bettina, and my question is, you were talking about chemicals and prescription drugs that affect the good bacteria. Yes. And I have uh, two daughters who are, you know, on birth control. I'm kind of way past that. But my concern is nobody talks about, or I don't hear any information about what birth control does to the bacteria in your stomach. Very good question. Actually, um, besides, you know, I know you can ask Dr. Chan about the other side effects, but I know it kills off any prescription medication. We have found women on birth control pills actually have a lot more inflammatory issues in the gut, and we recommend them to counsel so they can get other options besides using our bodies, which is so, you know, the medium having be a pill in our body. So I personally, after counseling women for 20 years on birth control, I would refer them, of course, to, an to a doctor like Dr. Chan about the details, but I would say from the gut standpoint, we have had people see that they do have a die-off. And this is the issue is that, you know, um, it's, it's very interrelated. It's the bioterrain. And if the terrain is acid, you know, if you're doing like birth control, it's one thing that makes it acid. So if you do a lot of things to alkalinize it, which I'm talking about too at my booth, and that's helpful, but any drug will kill it off, and then if your stress is added, which we all have, you need to replenish it. So if they really want to do that, I would never tell anyone, go off drugs, you know, if they choose that, but they need to replenish it and do the digestive test. Once a year, what I recommend for all of you is to do this comprehensive digestive analysis, which I have at the booth, and you can all come see me and we talk about it. So, yes. Thank you very much.
Let's thank Christine. Thank you very much.